Good morning and welcome to the first episode of Stay at Home Steam with Mrs. Nicholson. Um, to all my Oakhurst kids out there, I want you to know how much I miss having you at school and I look forward to the time that we're all back together. But in the meantime, I thought I would um, follow the lead of my friend Mrs. Riley who is doing the wonderful art videos and try to do some videos that can show you some cool experiments that you can try at home or some steam type um, activities that will hopefully keep you busy as you're stuck um, at home during this time. Um, so what we're going to do today is everyone's favorite. Um, we're going to make gloop, which um, as you guys know is a type of, of slime uh, that we make in my class. Um, we don't just do it for fun, as you know, we do it to learn. And everyone in each grade level has some sort of lessons on matter. And gloop is my favorite thing to do for matter because it's a great way to try to figure out the differences between a solid and a liquid. So we're gonna mix the ingredients together and then we're gonna go through some activities and um, we'll let you go for the day. So here we go. So the first thing you're gonna need is some glue, hence the name gloop. So we're gonna take a half a cup of glue and put it into our bowl. All right, then we're gonna take a third of a cup of water and mix it in with the glue. This is our glue water. So we're gonna mix that really well. Make sure that all of the glue is mixed in really well with the water. All right, once it looks kind of like milk, you're gonna go ahead and add a little bit of food coloring and any color is fine, of course. Um, we go with green a lot because Gloop is a lot like Ooblick. So if you're looking for a great book to read along with this, um, you can read uh, Bartholomew and the Ooblick by Dr. Seuss. So we're gonna go ahead and add a few drops of food coloring. I added about six drops of food coloring and mix it in there really well. So you'll kind of have what looks like green um, milk okay so the next step is going to be a little bit different so we're going to take another one-third cup of water um, it helps a little bit to have it a little bit on the warm side because you're now going to add in your borax and borax of course is um, a laundry booster so you can find it in the laundry aisle but it's something that does really cool things and makes this into a polymer which we'll talk about um, so we're going to add one fourth teaspoon of borax to the one third water and we're going to uh, mix it up until it dissolves and I want you guys to think about what the word dissolve means. We've talked about that in class. So once it's dissolved or bec um, become part of the water, you're going to go ahead and mix it in or you're going to pour it into your glue water. I'm going to make sure this is really good. All right. We're gonna go ahead and pour it directly into our glue water. We're gonna let it sit for a few seconds <clears throat> before we start to mix. Now, I like doing the mixing with my hands because I can feel it start to become the consistency that we want. So after it sat for a little bit, this is where you can get a little bit messy. So you're gonna go ahead and start reaching in and just start mixing it together. Kind of squish it around, keep squishing it. You'll see the longer you do it, it goes from feeling more like a liquid to a solid. And you can see it's already starting to get that consistency. So you're gonna keep mixing it and keep doing it, keep doing it until you get the right consistency. All right, you can see already we're starting to get a good portion here. And we've got some amazing looking gloop to work with. And just like that, we've got our glue, okay? Now, if it gets on your hand, just kind of roll it around. It'll come right off back into your glue, okay? So here's our glue. So, what I always like to have my students do once you have made the glue, is I want you to try some different things. So as I go through this, if you're trying to do this at home, I want you guys to think through these things. So when we've talked about the difference between a solid and a liquid, solids hold their shape and liquids take the shape of whatever container they're in 
Um, so if we're talking about gloop, if you see, if I just take this gloop and I set it down on the table, you will notice that it is not staying in the same shape as when I put it on the table. It is starting to spread out. So I want you guys to think, does that mean it's acting more like a solid or more like a liquid? Okay. Now, you're going to roll it back together. All right. And then this time, what I want you to do, kind of roll it into a ball and then just go quickly hand to hand. Now, as long as I'm moving it, it is holding its shape in the shape of the ball that I have made. So if it's holding its shape, would we say it's more like a liquid or a solid? All right, why don't you try that? Then we're gonna just hold it in our hand. And this is really cool because it starts to ooze between your fingers, kind of a cool feeling. And you can see that once it stops moving, it has now become something that is taking the shape of my hand instead of holding the shape that it was. So again, more like a liquid or more like a solid. All right. Now, when we talk about matter, we're talking about the different states of matter, solid, liquid, and gas. And you would think, how in the world am I gonna get a gas as part of what I'm doing with this? So one thing I like to do that's kind of, you know, it's pushing it a little bit to get gas, but I like to spread it out, and the kids at school tried this that have made it with me. So we're gonna stretch it out, stretch it out, stretch it out until it becomes really thin, and you bunch it all up together, and you squeeze. And you can find that you have created air pockets, and air is our third state of matter, which is a solid liquid or a gas. So I know, pushing it with the gas, but you definitely can see um, a way to kind of fit that in there as well. So again, as you try to work with it, I want you guys to think about if you are holding on to it and it starts to move and not hold, <clears throat> excuse me, move and not hold its shape, more like a solid, more like a liquid. Now, by the end of this, um, in class, what we always do is we talk about and then do a little bit of writing about if you think it's more like a solid or more like a liquid. So as you guys are trying this at home, I really want you guys to think through that. I want you to try to write down what are ways that it acts like a solid and ways that it acts like a liquid, okay? And then in the meantime, this stuff is really cool because you can seal it up in a plastic baggie and it will actually stay um, good for a very long time, okay? As long as it stays sealed, you can get it out and play with it. Now what I always tell my kids is you need to make sure you're not leaving this out because this looks like something very good to eat for dogs or cats or little baby brothers or sisters. So be careful that you're not leaving it out where they might think it's something to eat. Also, um, always play with it over a solid surface. If it gets into carpet or on upholstery, it can cause a mess, okay? If it gets in clothes, it will wash out, believe me, but it's um, better to work over a solid surface. So. I very much hope you guys will get a chance to make some gloop and um, please, please, please feel free to email me or um, leave a message on your dojo. I'm going to go ahead and post this on all the class dojos as well um, on some ideas that you guys have for future episodes of Stay at Home Steam and also um, just to let me know how you're doing because I do miss you guys and my email address is Jennifer. J E N N I F E R L dot Nicholson N I C H O L S O N at CMS dot K 12 dot N C dot U S. So I hope you all are having a safe and healthy time at home and enjoying time with your families. And just know that we at Oakhurst cannot wait to get you back into our classrooms. Have a great day.